Hi everyone! Today we are going to write our first line of code! Yay! Uh, so before you can follow this tutorial, you need to have created a, a user on Replit. Um, again, if you're wondering why we're using this, is so that we won't have to set up a bunch of stuff on VS Code. So if you haven't, pause the video and go and make a, um, a user. Okay, hopefully anyone who hasn't has done that. So let's log in. Well. What? Always equally fun to uh, live code. There we go. Now I created one with uh, Google. So let's start with Google. Okay, so when you are here, you go to create REPL and you go to node. So this here is the environment you would need to install on your computer and have um, all configured up and uh, ready to go on your own computer so that you would be able to run things in VS Code. And we are going to name this my first hello world. And if you keep saying hello world, it's because it's tradition that um, that is the first thing people ever do in a language is um, write uh, hello word and a world. And I'm going to show you exactly what that means. So create repl. So if we remember VS Code, actually, before we do anything, I'm going to go up a little bit side by side here with VS Code. So as you can see, it's trying kind of to emulate the same thing. Go away pop-ups. Um, you have files here. This is the same thing as the Explorer and the files here. Um, you have the console, that's the same thing as the terminal. It's going to show things when we ask it, ask it to show things. We have git over here where you can initialize a git repository. Um, and so it's, it's really trying to emulate the same things. So you have some tools down here. If you want to play around with it, what's the worst that could happen? It's that you need to delete it because you have some weird stuff and then you just create a new one. Uh, so don't be scared to click around and see what these do. Console just opens this back up. Shell over here just goes to the shell, etc., etc. So let's continue with this bad boy. So let's do our very first co console log, which is what you say to JavaScript when you want it to display something in the terminal. So let's do our very first hello world. I talked to um, a colleague and they uh, urged me to ask you to take a screenshot of it so that you can see the time and date because people get emotional over when they did their first hello world. So I'm not saying it's a big deal, but it might be a big deal, maybe to some. So hello world, big letters, very important. Now console log, as I've said, has a, a, is asking uh, the program to show what's written inside of these brackets. This is your first line of code. Anything inside the brackets needs to be, uh, any text inside the bracket needs to be um, uh, with these quotation marks to be shown as it is. So I'm gonna show you. Take a second. Whew, pretty cool. Okay, so we're going to do a console log and we're going to do one plus, there we go. Now we're going to hit run. So now it went to this line, printed that out. That's what we usually say. Then it went to this line and printed that out. But it also, as you can see, calculated it. That's because this within the brackets shows exactly 
what's inside, uh, not, sorry, not in the brackets, in the, in the quotation marks, it shows exactly what's inside of the quotation marks. And if we write numbers like this, it's going to treat it as something you can calculate. If we do this, we're going to get one plus two. So this is when you want something literally to be that thing that you print out. Now, I'm also going to show you that this right here, the, the computer will, will calculate it, but then it's going to not show us it because we're not putting it inside a console log. And it's also going to not store it and I'm going to talk about that uh, a bit next week, but it's not going to remember what it is. It's going to calculate and then just forget. So as you see, nothing has changed at all. Uh, if I would do console.log like that, it would do something. So just something to think about. Now, I'm going to show you a teeny tiny bit how debugging works as well. It works the same way in VS Code. You, um, well, I'm just gonna show you. So let's go to the debugger, it's over here. Now you set something called breakpoints to see where the code, to, to stop the code and to really have a deep delve down into the code. I'm gonna show you. Here is where I wanted to stop, then I wanted to jump over this line, and I wanted to stop here and then here. It's usually a good idea to put a, um, uh, a breakpoint after the thing that you want to double check, because it could be that you want to see the consequence of what this is going to do, and it actually needs to go through this line of code and move on before you can see the consequence of it. But okay, so we've set three breakpoints and now we're going to run it with the debugger. And in VS Code, you set breakpoints and you run and debug. So let's see here. Oh, sorry. Uh, so we need to take it step by step. So here we have next step. I believe I clicked on it and that's why it went Anyway, so you don't need to understand this at all um, right now. I just want to show you how it works to, to, to debug and what it means. So we're going to go to the next step. So it's actually... It did go through here. So um, it's doing it a bit differently than I'm used to right here. So I'm going to tell you what is going to happen for you and what is happening here and why I'm confused. So when we run this, and we have to wait, there you go. We start at the number for the number one line, the one with the breakpoint. And we see uh, which line we're on, number one, in which file we're on. and you really don't need to understand this. Now, when I press next step, what it's supposed to do is jump over this line because there is no dot. This is another um, way of doing it in this specific software. That doesn't mean that it's universal, but for some reason it's just going to every single one, which is odd. But that's the way it is. It won't do this in VS Code. It's going to jump over lines and only stop on the places where you set these, um, these dots. So now you have written your first line of code. You've seen kind of how the debugger works. Um, so I urge you to try it out yourself and have fun. Bye.